Go on, please. Being a professional tennis player requires an intense amount of concentration. A skill that all tennis players have to master is how to focus, relax and refocus during a match. This cycle happens every point. A player will concentrate intently during a rally, narrowing their focus. Then, once the point is over, the player will relax, catch their breath, widen their focus, create a plan of action for the next point before then finally refocusing as they set themselves to execute their plan. Doing this for a sustained period requires unbelievable amounts of what sports psychologists refer to as arousal control. Often simplified as emotional control, arousal control is more to do with energy activation. Being able to control one's arousal level means players can focus their intensity at the right moments of the game allowing them to be efficient with their energy expenditure on court. Think of it very much like a graph. Too much arousal or high levels of activation and players can become irritable, self-critical and even angry. But low arousal or low levels of activation and players will lack energy, seem frustrated, react slowly and potentially start tanking. In short, arousal has a close relationship with performance, but the previous diagram is perhaps too simplistic. Psychologists Yerkes and Dodson's inverted U is a more widely regarded theory on arousal, suggesting there is an optimum level or a sweet spot, a perfect balance between enough arousal but not too much. Social and sports psychologist Yuri Hanin further expanded on this, suggesting each individual will have their own sweet spots, known as ISOFs or individual zones of optimal functioning. Some athletes perform better when they're physically hyped or pumped and close to redlining, whereas others in this state would simply choke. Athletes can engage in a number of different practices to manage their arousal levels. Mental skills coaches or sports psychologists can teach athletes energizing and empowering self-talk to increase arousal, as well as calming breathing techniques to reduce a player's levels. When you see players breaking or attempting to break rackets, some are doing it to release extra energy and reduce their arousal level, whereas some are trying to increase it. Others will come onto court listening to music. Some might even listen during a change of ends. We often see players focusing on their strings after a point, trying to block out their surroundings, whereas others will shout out in frustration towards their box. After winning a point, some will let out a guttural roar of VAMOS! Others will use a simple fist pump and a hushed positive self-affirmation command like, come on. One other potentially potent weapon players have at their disposal is the crowd. It's widely accepted that performing in front of a large crowd increases activation levels by compounding the feelings of stress, anxiety and nervousness. According to social psychologist Zionich, the presence of a crowd actually helps top players. In pressurized environments, players are forced to rely on instincts, and as the top players naturally have better instincts, they tend to perform better under stress. Research also shows experienced players will typically have practiced coping mechanisms to deal with the added pressures of playing in front of a crowd. Over time, these players will have also learned how to use the crowd's behavior as performance cues to help them attain even higher levels of performance. This is known as social facilitation, it would seem, therefore, that top players have multiple advantages when playing in front of a crowd. Add this to the debilitative effect it can have on less experienced players, and one could argue playing without a crowd, as has often been the case in the last 12 months, would help level the playing field. Sport may be nothing without the fans, but their absence has allowed a unique natural experiment to take place, namely the study of the effects playing in front of a crowd can have on sporting performance. Research on the subject took place around the world in various sports. In football, a common finding was that home advantage was quelled by the lack of fans, with away wins up 12% after the first 92 fixtures in the Premier League compared to the season before. Similar results were also found in the top tier of German football, with home team win percentage in the Bundesliga dropping to just 29% in the first six weeks after its resumption. In tennis, there were considerably more upsets at both the US Open and Roland Garros in 2020. There were 15 examples of seeds being beaten by non-seeded players in the first round of the men's singles at those events. You have to go back to 2007 for the last time that happened. 
On the women's side, the US Open second round saw 11 upsets, the most in its Open era history, while at the French Open, five unseeded players reached the quarterfinals for the first time since 1976. Some saw it coming. Stefanos Tsitsipas said before the start of the 2020 US Open, I think it's going to be challenging for most players, especially for the top players who are used to having a big fan base. I think it's going to create a more equal space for any player. I think it benefits a bit the lower ranked players. But why? Well, top players were presented with an environment alien to them, cavernous but empty stadiums. By contrast, many lower ranked players are used to walking onto sparsely populated courts at minor tournaments and won't feel as much of the tension that a large Grand Slam show court crowd brings. For the top players, the silence conjured up a new problem how to increase activation levels. Andy Murray added, A crowd being there sort of helps you focus a little bit more and sometimes gives you that little bit extra boost in terms of your energy or your concentration. It's certainly different in that respect. What we witnessed over the summer of 2020 was an intriguing battle to see which of the top players could get mentally prepared quick enough to be ready to play without fans. A few struggled to adjust. French star Benoit Paire even openly admitted, When we started again, I was not ready mentally to play like this without fans. Those who altered their pre-performance routines or mental skills training to enable themselves to self-generate more activation performed better than those who relied on the crowd. It was something teenage sensation Coco Goff had to learn quickly after her first round defeat at the US. At the end of the day, you have to be your own best cheerleader on court, she said. For others who performed well, like Serena Williams, self-activation has never been a problem. I don't feel like I'm super different without a crowd, she said. I'm always going to bring that fire and that passion. Playing without a crowd became the new normal, but it is no longer different. Until the crowds return in full, activation must come from within. Mastery of this skill will become paramount to succeed at the top in 2021.